Goodbye, Bathurst. I'm going to miss you. We finally found some remnants of pace, and of course, it's the last day of my favorite combo, the GT3 Cup, or the 992 Cup, I guess you could call it, at Bathurst. We're going to hop into the 745 race, attempting to get as much as we can out of this week, as we are finally really feeling comfortable with a 205.8, still over half of a second behind the guy at the front, but not bad. It does put us in P3, and we have a new start where we basically just use the brake as launch control instead of using our clutch, and it yields uh, quite a better result. For us. You can see nobody is going side by side with us to start, which is a new experience for me. Car number 12 and car number 17, however, are going to end up going side by side. 17 has the inside, and on top of that, car number 11 is going to slide through behind him and push him down the straight, which is uh, probably going to give him that position as they head into corner two. The inside is where you want to be for this corner, always where you want to be. 12 understands that. He backs out, actually still ends up going into the wall. Looks like he's going to recover that, though. Not too much damage damage done. That is until car number seven decides to try and take advantage of this driving into, I don't know. I mean, that's a tough one to call. Either way, it slows down a lot of people. Joey, who's in the back in the alt pole racing livery, everybody say hi, Joey. He manages to make it through here uh, with a lot of people losing a ton of time, but definitely condensing the pack and gaining a few positions there. Car, I can't tell what car that is ahead of him, but he it's not going to be ahead of him for long as Joey makes a move up the inside before uh, even going down the mountain. That is a ballsy place to make a move, but the guy did leave the door wide open. Joey going around the outside of this blue car who runs into 18, spinning him, and just bare, I mean, that was, you were, he was the last person. Joey was like the last person to make it through that door. A car ahead going into the wall and then it going side by side with another car uh, down to, towards the straight. Joey taking advantage, actually gaining three positions there, sliding up the inside, so he had a fantastic lap one. Um, this guy behind... <laughs> I, he, I, I mean, he ran into the wall. He's crab walking down the straight, doing pretty well to um, allow everybody space. I mean, I know he's fighting with the wheel right now. It definitely it wants to go left. It wants to go right whenever he's going the opposite direction. He's trying to stay as wide as he possibly can to let this other guy through. But this other guy <laughs> is determined to use all of the track, regardless of if somebody is over there or not. And I mean, yeah, then that happens. I, the rest of everything that's going on down here is just kind of a shit show. Um, we're going to leave it at that. We, meanwhile, have a massive gap behind us. This is lap number two, and we are chasing down uh, Rexy here. I think that's, oh no, Roxy, excuse me, the female version of Rexy, up the mountain for the second time. And I'm just going to let it play a little bit so you guys can see how quick this guy was through the mountain. Like, he gets on the power, this is only the second lap, so your tires are still relatively cold. I'm taking it just about as fast as I as I can, honestly. I think this lap ended up being like a low 206 or somewhere around there. It's hard to immediately get into the 205s, but apparently not for this guy. As going down the mountain, he is continuously putting time between us. By the time we head onto the straight, I mean he's probably almost ha he's probably about at least half a second ahead of us now. Um, and then we are not going to get a fantastic run through there, understeering a bit in the middle of the corner and then slowing down uh, to make sure we got the angle. So killing our entry and killing our exit. On the bright side, the people behind us are not even really behind us. There's, there's just totally free air behind us. This is a few laps later, uh, lap number five. Car number one absolutely jumping this curb, going straight over it, allowing Roxy to cat not only catch up, but actually surpass him down the mountain. So car number one, who was in P1, has just moved down to P2 behind car number two. Say that 10 times fast. We make our way down the mountain not long after. You can see that uh, that interaction actually slowed the cars ahead a lot. And we were in the 205s by this point. We ran 205s for basically this entire race. But this would be the closest that they ever really were to us. And uh, we just really weren't able to keep up. Our laps were really good, but these guys were just that one step above us. We never quite got there. Uh, we, maybe if we had another week on this track, we would have gotten there. But uh, that kind of defeats the purpose of a race. You know, you're not supposed to have forever to practice. Crossing the line there for the final time in a, an extremely lonely, lonely P3. You can see there is nobody behind us. And the guys ahead of us were basically out of the, rate, out of the session before we even crossed the line. Here are the results 
for that one, a P3, and you can see both of the guys ahead are about 7K I rating, and their times are reflecting it. Both of them doing 204.8s. They kind of took turns uh, pushing each other down the straight, so uh, figures they were very fast. We did gain a lot of safety and I rating, so that was good. That was really good. This guy, shout out to Johan, again, saying hi, and we're qualifying for the next race. Psych, I got all of you guys right there. You guys really thought I was about to qualify. I decided to do a um, non-qualifying session just to make it interesting. Sadly, we were car number two for this, so if we got a bad position, we would lose a lot. The car ahead of us decides not to start, so that promotes us into P13 immediately. Uh, we were originally starting in P14. Car ahead gets a very bad launch, so we're going to go up his left side, which is the inside for turn one. Car number seven, who's in the that is that is Rexy. Uh, car number seven is going to go up the inside. We make contact as we're kind of three wide, and we, we're just trying to find space. We didn't want to touch anybody there. We ended up hitting that guy sadly, uh, but and pushing him down a position. I was kind of in a strange place there though, uh, with uh, Rexy going up my inside. So back into P13, we gained one, lost one. The cars ahead. There's a lot of them, and they're all going around to turn two at the same time on the first lap which is kind of how the first lap tends to go, unless there's a huge accident before turn two, which it might surprise you happens quite a lot on this track. Either way, we don't get caught up in uh, any accident. Actually, nobody does. This is probably the cleanest first lap at this point that I had raced uh, all week. And just following Rexy, Rexy, right? Yeah, just following Rexy down. God, it's so confusing. Rexy, Roxy, name your kids different things. Don't name them the same thing. It's just especially when they look the same like if you have two twin we had twins that were named like um i don't even remember their name they were their names oh it was chase and jace i had there were twins in my school that their names were chase and jace identical twins that's fucking evil anyway just a few cars ahead of us that pink and white car we are going to uh focus in on this guy for just a second as he comes he i mean he's way behind this guy and it seems like maybe they broke really hard but he also didn't break enough ends up completely cutting the corner diving killing that guy so we've got two people off the track we can pass the pink car passing the blue car promoting us up into p11 and this blue car is going really slow hopefully we can get around him um what the fuck hello hello hey What's up? Where are you going? I'm, I'm kind of like on the left side and I'm going pretty fast. Me too. No, why? I, why? The corner's ahead of you. I gotta get me some sauce. Some what? Dad's XO sauce. It's chunky seafood chili oil. Stretch shrimp. Scallops. Ham. Silly yummy. And it's a heater on your car. I, well, I know what the sauce is, but the problem is that I'm going that way. So you need to not... You're going to run into me. It's okay. Just go around me. I gotta no, get I this. Can't go, go around me. You are driving into me. I you know, but to I go gotta get me. it. It's a rare item. <sighs> Thanks for understanding. Oh, fuck me. Dad's XO, you'll risk your life for it. So, go check out that sauce. Oh, that's my girlfriend's sauce. It's fucking amazingly good. This guy was trying to go into the pit lane, and I mean how I I just I was not expecting him to do that that was like I, I guess I could have avoided it uh, but either way he goes flying into the dirt and then thanks yeah he has the audacity the audacity I could have done more I guess I could have slowed down more been a bit more cautious I, I really just wasn't expecting it either way our car is okay uh, so we make it around there with uh, just that contact. We do lose a lot of time to these cars ahead, but they have kind of condensed into their own little group. So I'm really hoping that them fighting can give us uh, some better positions. We're up into P10 at the moment, which is good. But as car number two, we realistically probably need at least P9, I'd say, to gain some I rating. That definitely doesn't seem out of the question. These guys are all over each other, and I think that we are pretty quickly going to be able to catch them. And the race is it's still really early on in the race. Beautiful move from Rexy as he takes the inside into turn one, and the red, white, and blue car kind of gets left out to dry, losing a ton of speed onto the straight, which is going to be pretty crucial because this whole group is pretty close. And as you know, um, a lot of slipstream on this track. The straights are very long. Looking perhaps for a move on the inside, if not on, if not on this corner, which obviously, I mean, we're already through it before I could even finish saying that. Uh, then on the straight at the end of the mountain. That, so that's my next target. It's just kind of to stay close enough to this guy that by the straight, 
we can sling past him and it doesn't seem like we're going to have too much trouble staying close to him. Everybody's kind of backing each other up as they're probably all riding each other's tails and that tends to just kind of get in people's heads a little bit. We actually back off of the car ahead there to uh, let him um, safely deliver his mountain run and by the time the next lap starts we're in the same position we weren't close enough at the end of that straight so the uh, new target is at the end of this straight as we are in a pretty damn prime position this is car number five ahead of me so he should be pretty fast but uh we're gonna move over to the right before him so he doesn't defend in time and uh, we're gonna break later than him as well not really a ton you can do I'm a huge advocate of not allowing people to have the inside there. Car number 11, uh, just a couple cars ahead, sliding out. Car number 6, who's leading our group, just gets touched, but he does get by. Everybody else has to slow down. We end up picking up a position from Rexy and a position from the car who slid out, plus that position uh, at the beginning of the mountain. So that puts us all the way up into P7 now, chasing car number 14. And at the front of this group, that red car is P5. The car who was in P4 has kind of pulled away as he just skated away uh, barely avoiding that incident that all the rest of us had just got caught up in. Trying to stay as close to this guy as we can. He is going to have the slipstream of the car ahead of him onto the straight, but uh, at least we can maybe tag along and pull away from the cars behind, is my hope at the moment. Coming on to the straight, super important that we get a good exit here. Down to second, don't want to cut in too late, and it's a honestly a really, really good run. Probably one of the better runs that I've had, and you can see behind me, a lot of space has begun to open itself up as car number 11 held Rexy behind him. So uh, we're safely away from Rexy, who was actually in front of us uh, previous to that accident. Car number 14 defending the inside there, good on him. That totally is going to deter me from looking for a move there. And our little group of three will continue on to the next lap. The cars behind are catching slowly as, uh, you know, that's kind of what defense does. We bait a move up the inside, not actually looking for it. And uh, all that's going to do is kill my run as 14 is totally not unfazed by it. And he's going to move to the outside of Ayrton Senna right next to him, who is taking a defensive line. Very Ayrton Senna-ish of him. But we're just going to watch this. Uh, but before we do... Remember to not like and subscribe right away. All right, so we got to make the octopus in the bucket, but the bucket is going to be, my girlfriend's holding it, and she's going to be walking across the yard, and we're going to throw it into the bucket while she's walking. And if I make it, you have to subscribe. I'm going to have to backboard it off your butt. No, you stopped. What? <laughs> The world is going to go crazy when I make that shot one day. Uh, for now, we continue watching this guy as he locks up his brakes on the inside, and it was actually the wrong decision uh, to follow him up the inside. I should have, I mean, you never really plan for somebody to actually make that work around the outside. These guys are caught up to us. Rexy almost looking to make a move up the inside of the mountain of car number 11. We have now uh, remained in our position, but car number 16, I believe that is, the Cinna livery right ahead of us has fallen back one. And when somebody falls back one position, you know how it is. They are, they're going to fall back another. You start looking vulnerable. We get hungry, people in the back. We get hungry. We want that. And that's how I'm feeling right now. You can already see the car ahead starting to pull away. And that is only going to add to my hunger. Getting right up behind car number 16. And um, going to try and stick as close as we can as we make the final turn onto the straight. Super important. He takes way too narrow of an exit. And we are 100% going to have enough speed to pass him. We must uh, we did touch the wall there, but that doesn't really hurt you too much. I mean, look at that. We're right on his tail. We are starving. Sniffing him. Yeah. I smell a position around, illegally, around the outside. And he kind of jolts to the side to try and deter me, but I am undeterred. Almost going into the back of him there, and then... Yeah, I was a bit too hungry for that one, not gonna lie. This was not my finest moment. Uh, I wasn't expecting him to break quite that hard. I, I feel I could have possibly left space on the outside, but um, we'll never know now because we didn't get that far. We ended up pushing him off the track, and not only does he lose one position, not only does he lose two, he loses three positions. So that was pretty dirty of me. I tried to apologize to him in the chat, but he actually disconnected before I could do that. Um, either way, we are now up into P6. Uh, that's just kind of racing. It was definitely not the cleanest move, but I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not going to shuffle back three positions to give him that one back. Car number 11 is uh, going to follow me onto the racing line, which is going to open up the inside for car number seven. 
and sure enough, he immediately moves over there and he's just gonna ride side by side. His nose is up just enough so that number 11 can't really turn in on him and that's going to give the position for free. That's kind of what I expected to happen uh, last lap and I expected Cinna to kind of do that same thing. But that is that was not to uh, to happen. So we continue to chase down P5, sitting in P6. We saw in our relative that uh, Rexy, yeah Rexy, fuck, that Rexy uh, got through behind us. So we know that he is now going to be making a dash to get back up to us. Me and him have both fought down or fought up through the field from P16, starting in P15 and 14 to now P6 and 7, and possibly uh, up another position. We have over half of the lap, or over half of the race left by half of a lap. We are half of a lap from being halfway through the race, and uh, this guy is staying on the racing line. We are soaking up that slipstream, looking to move up the inside, but he does fantastic on the brakes there, and I'm not going to have a repeat of what happened uh, on the last lap. was trying very hard to avoid doing that again. We have now surpassed the halfway, or we, are, we, have, we have now surpassed the halfway point of the race, up into uh, lap number seven, sitting in P6, hoping to get a top five here, and I feel pretty comfortable about it. There is nobody for miles ahead of this guy, so he is slip streamless. We are soaking up his all of the way down the straight. It's gonna put us pretty close here. Not close enough for a move, but close enough that we should be able to hold this gap, even if he's a little bit faster uh, onto the straight. But we're not even gonna wait that long. Up around what is the outside of that turn, and then onto the inside of the little uphill section, and we just barely managed to find the space. I was really, really happy with this move. This is a move I love. I actually put this move on AI all the time, but it's not very often you get the opportunity uh, to do that in a, uh, in a real race against people. So that one felt super good. And that would move us up into a top five position. We now have car number 14 between ourselves and Rexy. Car number six, who's sitting in P4, is already basically at the in the middle of like these double chicanes down the mountain as we are just now entering into them. So the hope of catching him was slim, but it was still there. I'd say he was about eight seconds, maybe not. Uh, shoot, man, looking at that, maybe 10. These are the leaders, and then this is him. So there's another 10 seconds between them, probably. The leaders were, were gone. There was no chance of us catching them. Behind us, Rexy is looking to make a move um, into what is actually the outside of this corner. He's gonna end up backing out, but the car ahead breaks way too late for that inside line, and he goes flying off of the track. So that would put Rexy behind us by uh, probably under a second, or maybe just around a second, which means we have to run. On to the final lap and run we did. Uh, I'm not even gonna show where we are because we were pretty far away from uh, the guy behind us. We uh, safely secured P5 at this point. This is the fight for the lead. Car number four, Lightning McQueen in the Dynaco livery, bringing up the rear. Car number one, looking to make a move up the inside of turn two, making contact. And honestly, uh, at the time, the, the guy in the Caterpillar car definitely felt like this was on car number one, but car number one had his nose up there. I'd, I'd say he kind of had his nose up there, and the Caterpillar guy left that that move open, and this is the last lap. You know that kind of stuff is going to happen. Four looking to make a move similar to what I did, but he's going to end up backing out. Very dangerous to uh, try and send it if you don't very clearly have the track position uh, through that double left-hander there, and he's going to stay behind car number one up the hill, chasing him down. Car number one into the wall. Four looking to take advantage of it, but again going to make slight contact, or uh, car number one at least again is going to make contact. Uh, twice on this lap and these other guys would prove to be pretty upset about that I that contact is going to drop the him off uh, to the point where he isn't really able to catch up by the end of the this is the end of the race this is the last corner coming up he did he did well to catch back up honestly close that gap down the straight car number one taking a super defensive line just to completely deter any chance of a dive bomb and it's going to work out in his favor Meanwhile, here we come to, uh, just chugging along, probably about, I don't know, 18, 19 seconds behind these guys. We are just now making the final corner. They are all out of the session at this point. Well, they're out of their cars, but they're not out of the session. We cross the line in P5. Let's go. Um, pretty good result starting uh, where we did. I was pretty worried once I saw we were car number two that we were just going to absolutely lose all of our I rating. But that wasn't the case. We actually uh, did pretty well to save it. Looking in the chat, and yeah, these guys said 10 times in half a lap from the leader, and this guy said 8 times in half a lap from the leader. So if I'm doing the math correct, the leader should have gotten 18 incidents, which would give him a penalty. 
And sure enough, baby, a penalty he got. We ended in P4, and the guy who finished as the leader ended in P10. So um, they weren't lying. He had 21 incident points that race. He had a drive-through penalty that he failed to serve. So yeah, it put him down quite a few positions. We lost a ton of safety rating, but we did gain I rating, which is great. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my other videos and my channel. Um, it would help me out a lot, and I will see you later.